Hi everybody. Um, just wanted to show you a product that arrived today. Um, yeah, obviously you, you missed the unboxing only because I wanted to have a, a good couple of test runs with this before trying to present it to everybody. Um, just to get a feel for how it works. Um, because this is a, a technology or, or, you know, something that everybody has tried to do at one time or another. Um, either by themselves or with a little tool or, you know, a, a DIY tool that is out there on the various uh, printables, thingiverse, etc. And have had some successes, yeah. Uh, so, this was my last thing that I tried to do this with, and I ultimately, as you can see, it's in the bag. I've given up on it uh, in that same regard. So, with that in mind, let's, uh, I've already plugged it in. It's plugged into a phone charger down in the corner. Um, obviously, it's, it is USB powered um, in that regard, but it is two amps. So, if you have anything, don't plug this into your computer. Um, obviously use a battery pack as long as it's rated above two amps uh, so three or better um, or a mobile phone charger with the same or similar ratings yeah um, the filament I'm going to be using in here uh, was also supplied um, with it so PLA 2.0 uh, so it's PLA plus 2.0 um, actually shows it's capable of up to 300 millimeters per second um, according to the little temperature ranges they give here and I'll just point those out uh, real quickly there so obviously 300 millimeters per second it can do at 220 um, that'll be very interesting to test that uh, in another video so in the meantime let's go ahead and get this going so I'm gonna open this up have a look inside yep obviously this is where it does the magic so the little metal piece there, obviously, and let's zoom in on that. Little metal piece, obviously, is where it does the welding and obviously turns your two pieces of filament into one. Yeah. So instructions obviously walk us through to turn on the unit. As you can see, I've been working it recently. Uh, I've set it for 195. The default will come up at 185. Uh, I figured the minimum temperature on this spool says 195. Um, they also, the instructions said you can press this and you can choose the presets. Or you can press it again and you can set the temperature yourself. Yeah. Uh, which is quite good. Now, obviously that, like I said, that started out at 185. And I thought, you know what, let's try this at that temperature because welding times on this is usually just literally seconds. Yeah. So what we're going to do as soon as it reaches the temperature and it gives us some sound, uh, obviously, I'm just going to close that. When it gets to the temperature, makes a nose, we're going to press the button, put the filament in, close the lid, and it's going to make it as soon as we close the lid it's going to make a, a little beep as soon as it makes the second net set of tones that means it's done so we need to eject this filament from where it's at yeah so waiting for that i am also trying to be mindful um doing this accelerated um demonstration uh, because there are platforms that have time limits and I'd like to get all of this into a single video so apologies in advance I will go over this a little bit further after now this little tube is definitely very snug over that filament and you want that that where the two tips of them come together right in the middle okay there's our beep telling us the little heating element in there is now at temperature. You can definitely feel some heat coming off the top. So we're going to open that. Place the joint dead center. There's two little mark, you know, indent marks showing you where the center is. Close the lid. As soon as you do, hear the beep. That's where it starts. And lightly press on this to press that filament material together.
that's it. That should have welded. I'm going to lift that out now and just let it cool. You can see obviously with the amount of heat in there it was even starting to soften the sides. Now they said five to ten seconds should be sufficient. Yeah, I can definitely put my fingers on it again and it's relatively cool. Close this to obviously protect your fingers. Um, place it in here and close the lid. That's only doing that because I closed the lid again. It started another timer. It thought I was joining another one. So press that down. Now what that does Let's just pull that out of there. There we go. That cuts that little tube. Let's see if we can get the autofocus to do us some justice here. As you can see, it's obviously splitting it. It has split it completely. So you give a little push on one end. Like so. And you can probably just about peel it off then. Yeah. It is very, very thin walled tubing. Um, like I said, this feels like PTFE um, in that regard. So I'll put that to the side. There we go. Um, and there we have um, the joint. Um, it feels nice and solid, nice and smooth. That's enough to go through an extruder. Um, let me just do the necessary though. Obviously, this is one of those question marks that everybody is going to ask, especially when welding two filament pieces together, is how's that going to do in my all-metal extruder? Um, so let's go ahead and find out. You know, and apologies in advance, uh, obviously, if... Uh, <laughs> so let's see where we're at. That's 1.8. Yeah? Now, considering that's before the joint. Okay, a little bit closer. Okay, let me just go ahead and make sure I zeroed. Yeah, there we go. Okay, if we can see that now. Just going to go ahead and measure 1.76. And I'm just going to jump. Okay, so there's 1.79. That's 1.7. Where is that? That's about in the middle of the joint. So it actually got a little bit thinner right there that's 1.84 that's actually not bad 1.75 so there is a spot that it can reach 1.75 yeah, 1.81 okay um, the reason I did this um, is I know this is going to come up. Um, I, I would have brought it up. So there, there's a spot. 1.85. Okay. Yeah, 1.0. Okay, so about in tubes. Uh, obviously, if you have an Ender 3, an Ender 5, an Ender 5 Pro, uh, Ender, you know, any of the Ender series, um, to be fair, other than starting with the S1. You know, Ender 3 S1, um, which came with a direct drive, um, which was a, the Sprite. The inner diameter of typical Bowden tube, uh, obviously, is 2 millimeters. Yeah, it's the same inner diameter that an all-metal throat has, which is 2.0. Yeah, um, this is why tip formation on some uh, printers that have color switching, where it literally does this, um, is important to try and get that to taper off. Um, not just for the purpose of your changing unit, but uh, obviously try and get that not to be very bulbous. Yeah, because if it gets too big, it will jam. Okay, either in the tube or in the all metal throat. And since that's in the cold zone, it will jam there. Your extruder will chew the filament and it won't come back out. Yeah, now that is really good. That is a good joint. That is good enough that I am confident that would pass through the heat break, uh, obviously, and, you know, every portion of the filament path on my Prusa, 
uh, obviously i3 uh, it's the i3 mk3 s plus or on frank which has a triangle labs dragon uh, all metal hot in with a direct drive um, that means it would also easily pass through most of the Bowden tube that I'm currently using because obviously like on my Prusa I have three millimeter inner diameter coming from the dryers all the way down to the MMU and then obviously from there it goes down to uh, obviously just uh, like a 2.5 uh, that I use to go between the buffer and that going from the MMU though is 2.0 it's uh, actually uh, a special type of PTFE, um, but the inner diameter is consistent, 2.0 millimeters. Frank, same thing, uh, reverse Bowden. Um, so I don't want something that I've joined like this to get stuck or cause friction where it causes the extruder to just basically start chewing a notch in that because that leads to under extrusion. So that is very good. Um, obviously, yes, I, I've had, uh, if I'm honest, <clears throat> about two practice runs um, for this. Um, the first one, obviously, I thought to use just the, the temperatures that they have, obviously, preset. So, like I said, the PLA started at 185. Now, that is, that is a temperature that would have worked if this was high-speed PLA. The ones that are made for 350 millimeter per second. 400 millimeter per second, 500 millimeter per second, because they have a lower melt temperature. Yeah, they will melt at a much lower lower temperature in order to, at your normal printing temperatures that most people would use um, for typical filament, you can now print at high speed. Um, PLA Plus 2.0, 300 millimeters per second at 220. So there's definitely something special about this, but I thought, you know what? Minimum temperature, there it is black and white 195 it's intended for 50 to 100 millimeters per second so the 50 equates to 195 so I thought go with that lower temperature first not the default and that's with Sunlu branded filament yeah just because there's a preset people do not always go by that know your material yeah um, I did test it to see if it would work with that it did not join as reliably yeah I am really impressed with that um, and I think uh, the next question I'm gonna have for them which I don't have an answer yet because this literally just only arrived today um, is these little tubings obviously you get a fixed number of these each one of these is a joint yeah basically these are gonna be cut away each time once you run out of these you have to get more I do not know how much those are going to be. This will be on sale, uh, obviously, on the 14th, I'm told. Um, obviously, Sunlu will have them from their page. I'm assuming, obviously, they will likely also have it on a number of other sale points, but I'll let them advertise that. But I will include a link, uh, obviously, to their Facebook and to their pre-sale pages. But there it is, um, the Sunlu filament connector, uh, obviously very very nice now I am gonna do one thing just for the sake of doing it okay because there will be people who ask what's the maximum temperature that you can do on here so let's just go here let's go ahead and just jump okay so we have 230 there yeah if I go to here though okay there's your top temperature people 240 top temperature is 240 C that is normally a printing temperature that most people will find for PETG and some ABS. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put that back down because uh, obviously that's for PA. Um, I find PA likes to obviously do a different thing. But I am going to test uh, over time some of the other materials because I do have some of these um, in other you know, brands in that regard. Uh, I was kindly gifted uh, the PLA plus 2.0 to test this with but uh, it'll be interesting to see if it can do all of these different ones that's the only one I'm not sure if uh, you know I'm gonna be able to get a hold of um, but we'll have to see how that goes but um, yeah there we go ABS PTG PA PCO PLA there we go 
So with that in mind, there we go. Sunlu filament connector, five volt running, makes decent uh, joinings of filament where I should easily be able to re-spool that, um, put a couple of spools together. And believe me, I when they told me that I was going to get the opportunity to check this out, um, I started going through my office finding every little tiny piece of filament that was left over either from changing filament spools from the you know buffer on my Prusa um, or to ones that I finished a print and there was not enough to start another uh, real big project and you know you don't want to throw it away so this should be very interesting I just need to start uh, doing that and I'll do that in a follow-up video um, after they've uh, most likely released it because that's only in a few days anyway I hope this has helped um, with the regard because uh, I do tend to waffle um, with any questions you might have uh, regarding this device um, if you have a question that you want to ask uh, ask it in the comments um, obviously I'm happy to try and answer them if I can um, if I don't know the answer I will try and find out for you um, I will also if it's one that has to do with usability or can it do a particular material let me know what that material is and I'll see what I can do and then follow up with you know with the comment and the video okay hope you enjoyed that I actually did um, now I need to find my box that I put all those filament pieces in and start trying to make a spool worth. 